And uh, uh, you're tuned into your Celebration Radio Network. This is Bill, and I've got Pastor Ryan and John and Terry in the studio this morning. So good Friday morning to good all Friday of you. Friday morning. And morning. good Friday, Friday morning. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and happy Passover. Yes, that and happy Passover. Yeah, today yes. at sunset. Yes. Yeah, so a whole bunch of stuff. Wow, going on. yeah, a lot of stuff happening today. Yeah, yeah, right. big day. Glad we're here. Yeah. <laughs> very, Glad you guys could make it today. Aren't we still yeah. on a Sabbath? Wasn't yesterday a high Sabbath? Um, actually, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that, but okay, um, good, in Jesus' good. day, it was, yes. that's that's uh, for sure, because uh, in the year AD 31, when Jesus was actually crucified, uh, Passover started one day earlier than this mm-hmm. year, yes. so it would have it would have been Thursday at sundown. We'd still be in, you know, the, the full day of Passover right mm-hmm. now, so. Was that like Nissan 15? Uh, yeah, what, excellent. Boy, like this yeah, guy's good. Wow. He's, he's showing off. Yeah, yeah, yeah he is. Yeah, Nissan <laughs> 15. Yeah, yeah man. And um, yeah, so you know, today is Good Friday, but but that's that's something that I that I talk about and teach about is is much more likely Jesus was actually crucified on Thursday. Yes. So he, he was. was so he was in the tomb. Kind of impossible you know, to be right. crucified on Friday and still have three days in, right. in yeah, he, three he nights said, in the yeah. tomb. So right, exactly. he said it the one the one way. sign you'll you'll be given, you know, the the wicked yeah. generation that's he said, you know, is a sign of Noah who spent three mm-hmm. days and three nights in the belly of the fish. Mm-hmm. And then you go back and re- read the story of Jonah. Did I say Jonah? I think uh, he's you yeah, said no. Okay. Okay. You said no. Okay. Okay. We, meant, I, we I, knew you meant Jonah. I haven't started drinking my coffee yet. Yes, but when you go back and read the story of, of of Jonah, Jonah actually refers to, you know, where he was, the belly of the fish, as Sheol, which of course is the the you know Hebrew word right. for Hades. Mm-hmm. So so Jesus is saying, look, I'm going to spend three days and three nights in in Hades and Sheol, right? And uh, yeah, so yeah, it, you you can't yeah. get that from no. you know Friday <laughs> afternoon right, exactly. crucifixion, right. Then Sunday yeah. morning. Yeah. yeah, that's not three days and three nights. No. Right. I've, I've exactly. heard people try to massage that into meaning that yeah, doesn't, yeah. doesn't work. Doesn't work. No. <laughs> well, it's still only twenty four hours in a day, guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that yeah, hasn't you know. changed since the nope. dawn of time. Yep, yeah, exactly. exactly. So, being Good Friday, um, I know that uh, we'll get to Revelation here in a little while. I wanted to ask all three of you um, what the cross means to you. What yeah. what does this day? actually right. mean to you yeah i mean a lot of christians you know they wear the crosses around their necks but they don't know what it means right you know they're they're kind of those the the christians that just you know say that they're a christian but they don't really understand the gravity like we just heard what from rebecca means, just yeah. a few moments ago could you imagine walking that road to Golgotha with a beam on your back yeah you know and it wasn't just a little two by four we're talking you know like probably a 16 by 16 or oh, yeah it was, it or was heavy. You know, 12 yeah. by 12 something like that and and with He's what he had down. already gone through right yeah you know being beaten and and uh whipped and you know and all of that so yeah yeah the agony so that's my question and whoever wants to start first go ahead Always let right, ladies first, right? At me <laughs> right, yeah, ladies first. <laughs> I don't know. I was kind of hoping to listen to everybody else and kind of collect my thoughts, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't know. For me personally, it just means that I'm free. That no matter what wow. happens in my life, no matter the junk in my past, God still loves me because He did that for me and He did it for each and every one of you. So I know I'm going to spend eternity with Him because. Of what he did you know and I you think about it would you put your would you sacrifice your son or your daughter for inter, for mankind right and I don't think any of us would yeah so God loves us that much yeah and I know once I started grabbing on to Christ my life changed for the better you know and he's with me all the time and I know that's because of the cross Amen. Excellent. Very well said. Yeah, very she well said. She didn't need to gather yeah. anything. No. She had it. She nailed it. John and I don't even need to say anything now. You know, Neither do I. We're all good. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Terry. Yeah. No, no seriously, though. No. Oh. Go ahead, John. <laughs> Can I right. just say ditto? <laughs> no, no, what, no. What no copy in your wife. No, sorry. <laughs> well, you know, it's just, I always, um, like, if you if you watch, I, I still have to this day have not watched The Passion, because... I have mm. a hard time watching anything with that. Yeah. Um, so it when is I a think very about difficult movie to watch. Yes. Yeah. So when I think about this week and what he went through, you know, just coming in on Palm Sunday mm-hmm. and everybody screaming and shouting Hosanna, 
going from that right to now you're being ridiculed now you're being blasphemed now you're being beaten you know yeah. and everything that he went through it just it just it, it it brings me to tears mostly and I, and I just and I look at that and I'm always like he took that of everything that I've done in my life the sin that I have in my life and took that and and wore that and, you know as I say in the bibles he, he the stripes yeah. you know his, his his skin was just filleted off of him not to be so graphic in the it's morning true, though, but it yeah. was just yeah. totally yes. filleted it was just raw muscle on his back nothing left um to the point of almost dying and most people did die during those whippings yes they did um, but he didn't um just taking on all that sin and yeah. everything he took on in his life do and he bore that for me um because i truly am a wicked person we yeah. all are mm. deep down inside all have sinned and we all have that it's our nature yeah yeah, it's yeah we nature. all fall yes. short yes definitely yeah. um so without that i just look at that and what he did for me going on with what terry said it's like i have that salvation now and to be with him and i have nothing left to do but to fall at his feet and praise him for what he did for me because there's yeah. nothing i can do all everything yeah. i do in this world is as, as filthy rags and i'm not going to get into what filthy rags means because that's a whole nother definition yeah. Yeah. but um yeah but it is yeah. I, all the good i think i am all the good i think i do it's filthy rags compared to what he did for us and how he lived his life perfectly and took that on himself and that's as a sinless yeah. man yeah, yeah. amen yeah. So. All right, Pastor. <laughs> I know, I, 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 they left me nothing to say. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. The, like, like, what do I say? I'm now? scrambling right now to try to figure out what I'm going to say. Well, it's funny because you, you actually um, uh, asked us to prepare to talk about this a, a day or two ago, right? So we've yeah. had plenty of time to. But um, but I felt like what I think you guys felt too is just, you know, get here and, and, and the Holy Spirit will, you know, move. So mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't prepare, you know, notes on, on this question at all. You know, it's got to come from in here, right? right. You yes, know, our, our exactly. hearts, our spirits. That's but, what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I I kind of look at, at at more you know big picture in addition to you know what what this lovely couple said. Yeah, very profoundly. Um, to me, it means this universe has a purpose that mm-hmm. that, that God is real, that He created us, that mm-hmm. this isn't by accident. You know, um, humankind, we didn't just happen. You know, by chance, but there's a plan and a purpose and. You know, yeah, we messed up when he first created us. You know, thank you, Adam and Eve. <laughs> but but look at the lengths that God has gone to and, and, you know, went to for millennia, just preparing to, you know, send his son into this, you know, dark and fallen world, right? You know, he came all the way down, became one of us. Um, we, you know, Pam and I were just talking about that this this morning. I accidentally woke her up when I was getting ready for the show. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but, yeah, she, she was about, we, had, we had a great talk. But, but you know, she brought up, you know, like, like um, what does it mean that Jesus became poor for us? And and I think ultimately what it what it really means is that you know he gave up everything in heaven he was you know seated at the right hand of the Father you know gave up that throne uh, talk about becoming poor you know leaving mm-hmm. that to come down here become a lowly yeah. human mm-hmm. like John said I mean you know we lived perfectly lived a perfect spotless life and then and then you know like like Terry you know went into just the the, the torment and the torture you know that that he suffered um, to pay the price for our sins. Uh, the, the filthy rags things. My God, we should compare notes sometimes. No, let's not. Yeah. <laughs> right. Not right now. We'll yeah. do that later. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 what does the cross mean to me? It means that that thank you, Father. We we can be reconciled to Him because of what Jesus did for us. Thank you, Jesus, for for paying that price. He didn't he didn't want to in his flesh. He was no. he was human. He was a hundred percent human, a hundred percent God. So you remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, yes. sweating yes. sweating like great mm-hmm. drops of blood. Just you know, uh, the agony in emotional that he must have been going torment. through, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. That might have been the hardest part of the whole process for him. Who, I'm who pretty knows, sure you know? it was. Yeah. That, that's my, yeah. that's my sense. You know, once once he made that determination, Father, not my will, but Your will be done. Mm-hmm. So it means we can be reconciled to the Father, which is not a small thing. No. It means that I can live yeah. for eternity. Mm-hmm. That that I don't have to face you know um, you know the end with with fear and dread, and I'm, I'm just going to cease to exist, uh, or worse, right? Right. Whoever yeah. doesn't. Um, it also means, and this is kind of the big one for for me, that I think for all of us, that that you know, fifty days later after Jesus paid that price, then then the ultimate benefit to us on this earth came, which is which is the Holy Spirit, the Day of Pentecost. Yeah. Mm. Shabbat is the Hebrew yes. holiday. So because of that, we we can, you know we can be the temple of the Father, right. not just living here and and you know mm. you know thank God God has a plan for us and loves us, but but to have that supernatural, you know, direction yeah. and power and, and mm-hmm. purpose and 
and, and that abundant life that Jesus promised. Yeah. Jesus didn't just come to give us life. He says, right. I came to give you life and life abundantly, more right. abundantly. So, so it, it, it's pretty big. Yeah. It's everything that he did yeah. on the cross. It's so much. Mm-hmm. But that one singular moment just expands out into yeah. every facet of, of our lives. Not just here and now, but for eternity. Right. So, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. This really. is this is Good. without any Great. notes or anything. Just there you go. <laughs> straight from my spirit. So, thank you, Father. Yeah. 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 Oh, you know. And, you know. We do have a new term, Ryan. I'm pulling. That? I'm pulling a speakman. Oh yeah. Yeah. When you start talking, you don't stop. You know, just keep going. <laughs> oh yeah. Speak, 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 speak man. <laughs> yeah. I did that the other day. I was talking and talking. I said, "Oh boy, I'm pulling a speakman." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Good. I'm. I'm. I'm rubbing off on you guys. <laughs> And uh, I just want to add that, uh, to take us back a little bit to um, Abraham and Isaac on the mountain. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, a foreshadowing of what was to come. Mm-hmm. And Abraham says these words to Isaac as they're going up the mountain. You know, he asks the question, Father, we have the, you know, we have the wood, we have the fire. Where's the sacrifice? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, he's yeah. like, what's uh, going on, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and... He looks at him and says, God himself, mm-hmm. himself, yeah. Oh, yeah. not God will, but yeah. God himself, himself oh, wow. will provide the sacrifice. Mm-hmm. So the cross yeah. was the answer to Ooh, Isaac's, or, yeah, yeah. Isaac's question. Right? Yeah. Where, where's the sacrifice? Yeah. So it's we God get, himself. yeah, wow. because he wrapped himself in flesh yeah. and came to earth to die. Wow. Yep. And not only our sins Every person sins that's ever lived or ever will. Right. Maybe. Could you imagine the weight that we carry ourselves? Mm-hmm. Oh, just sometimes for, just for is just right. done. overwhelming. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. You know, yes. in our past and, and the things that we do. And but could you imagine everybody's? Mm. No. You want to know why he was in the garden, sweating those great drops of blood? Mm. That's why. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Because he was going to be separated gonna... from mm. the Father. Yeah, there was not going to be. I mean, the cross. You know, he says, "Why have you forsaken me?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God had to. He had to. He turn had his back to on, yeah, on that yeah. sin. because that, he that can't the be Christ. in the presence of sin. In, yeah, exactly. Sin. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, very good. So he had to separate himself, mm. and then Christ mm. had to bear that weight. Mm. Yeah, on himself, mm. and then he says the two most profound words. It's finished. Yeah, exactly. The veil rips in two. Mm-hmm. We now have a path yeah. to, to the to the throne, to yeah. God Himself, to you know His presence, which no one but the mm-hmm. high priest could. Yeah, yeah. we become for the temple. Yeah. Thousands of years, yeah, it yeah. dwells in us. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Right. Yeah. So, and then uh, you know, then we have the glorious resurrection mm. three days later. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, not, how not amazing. two days later, three days later. Yeah, three yes. days later. Okay. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But so, yeah, wow. it's, it's 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 a amazing time that we're in right now. The, oh, it the, is the yeah. three days. So yeah. So right. so really, the period started you know yesterday. yesterday and, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's cool that uh, Passover starting today um, because it, it's you know not every year, of course, that that what we call Easter, you know, Resurrection Sunday, let's call mm-hmm. that. Yeah. That it coincides with, with Passover, Passover you know? but it but it did that year, that yeah, year that, that Jesus exactly. died on the cross. That's why he was there in Jerusalem. Yeah, it's because yeah. you know they prepared for the Passover. They had to, mm-hmm. you know, on Wednesday evening they went into, you know, the upper room and and uh, one of the greatest um, examples of servanthood. Mm-hmm. Jesus gets on his knees and washes his disciples' feet. Yeah, yeah. you know, I mean. The creator of the universe. I know, and he said, <laughs> yeah, "He know? said, I, I, I have to become a servant. Yeah. You know, that's that's why he came, not to be served, but to yeah. but to serve." And, and he, yeah. he even washed the feet. He even washed the feet of Judas, who yes. betrayed him, and he well, knew. Good point. Judas yeah. was going right. to betray him, yeah. but he did it yeah. anyway. Yeah, he did. And I'm always so. I'm always amazed too because he already knew it was going to happen. He knew mm-hmm. he was going to have to go to the cross. Most of us, when we know we have something terrible coming up, like we have an exam coming up or something really kind of bad coming up. We, surgery focus, or whatever. we, we yeah. focus on that and tend to withdraw from everything. Yeah. But here's Jesus knowing within a day or two he's going to go before the cross and everything he was going to go through. And he's still focusing on others. Yeah. Washing their feet. Yep. Discipling yeah. them. Even though he knew what was going to happen. He knew it was yeah. coming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he did. And I'm, I'm not sure he knew the, the, the full details of it until 
mm-hmm. just a couple weeks before. And we were talking about this the last couple of shows, right? The Mount of Transfiguration. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the only so, so so I have I have a you know my own theories of course or hypotheses about some of what might have been discussed. So so we you know again the last couple of shows if, if people want to you know review go go look at our podcast. Yeah. The end times with uh, Bill Ryan and John on iHeart Radio. Uh, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, right? And I think we're going to be changing the name. We're putting Terry's name in there. We'll talk, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because she's she's becoming like a regular. So yeah. we need we need her here, right? Yeah. But um, but yeah. So Man of Transfiguration, he meets with Moses and Elijah in the flesh up on the Man of Transfiguration. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, I've been up there, of course, and it was all the way mm-hmm. back in 2012 was the last time I was there. But you know, it's beautiful. You drive up from the from the you know the Jezreel Valley, the Valley of Megiddo, it's called, mm-hmm. right? Uh, up to the top of Mount Tabor and, you know, pine trees and, and cool air and everything. But um, but the view from up there is the Valley Spe- of Megiddo. Yeah, mm-hmm. spectacular, where, yeah. Uh, it is, it is. But you're looking, you know, to the west toward right the Valley of Megiddo. The, yeah. Where, yeah. The, where the War of Armageddon will be stayed. Yeah. So, you know, I, I kind of have this, you know, theory, like, I wonder if they were discussing, you know, that. Because <laughs> yeah. they're involved in that story, Moses and yes. I draw the yeah. two witnesses. Mm-hmm. But but the only thing that the Bible tells us they, that they discussed is what Jesus was about to suffer in Jerusalem. And that was two weeks later, mm-hmm. like John was saying, yeah. you know, yeah. on, on Nissan uh, 10 mm-hmm. Sunday, what we call Palm Sunday. We celebrated that last Sunday and, uh, you know, walked in knowing what he was facing and still, still mm-hmm. went through the whole thing. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. absolutely amazing. Mm. Um, it is truly. But he had to be, he, he had, he had to be our, it had to be a Passover because he's our perfect Passover yes. lamb. You know, that's what Paul call, calls him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But do you want do you want to talk about the dates of that at all, or the dates of the, the dates of like how the whole thing transpired? Did we do that? <laughs> Have no, we, we did, did that? Yeah, we did that. Um, I don't remember a couple of weeks ago, but you can run. Yeah, over I mean, it I mean, just, you want. Yeah. just yeah, just briefly. Yeah. I think I think we. I mean, we had probably several times on the show here, but but yeah. So so Nissan ten. Mm-hmm. 10 it's actually pronounced Nissan. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm still training myself to say it right, but. Um, uh, that's just you know five days before Passover, which which God you know mandated and ordained would be on uh, Nissan fifteen, right? Like John mm-hmm. said. Mm-hmm. So so uh, Wednesday evening. So so it, it gets complicated because uh, Jewish day right. uh, starts at at you know starts and begins at sundown. Right. Mm-hmm. So we think of like midnight or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So it was actually about six o'clock Wednesday evening. It's is, sunset. Yeah. It, it's at sunset, sunset that the day yeah, begins. Right. Yeah. So basically, Thursday started, you know, Wednesday, you know, at sunset, right, is yeah. kind of how we might say it. But uh, that was Nissan 14. What the Bible actually tells us is is not that that was Passover that day. And we're, and we're talking about the, you know, when they had the um, the Last Supper, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, that's actually referred to in Scripture. You know, I, I should read the I should read the actual verses here. It's called um, uh, the Preparation Day. Mm-hmm. So this is actually the, the day that they're preparing uh, for the Passover, and this is where they, the Jews fulfill the mitzvot right. of of going through the house and removing all the all the leaven from the house, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, chametz, they call it. So, so uh, Luke twenty two. Um, you said that word, not me. <laughs> yeah, chametz, yeah. yeah. If I I'm probably, I'm probably butchering that too. So, yeah, <laughs> clearing my throat. <laughs> <laughs> my Jewish friends always say, you know, you get that one thing right, you do the, the guttural thing yeah. real good in your throat, you know. So, but um, but yeah, Luke twenty two seven seven eight actually says, then came the the day of unleavened bread. Mm-hmm. Uh, what um, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself here. Hold on. <laughs> No, that is right. The day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed, and he and Jesus sent Peter and John saying, "Go and prepare mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Passover for us that we may eat." But if you look at the actual original Greek, um, a better a better translation is "Go and prepare for the Passover mm-hmm. that we may eat." It's not right. preparing the Passover meal. You know, if you look at the Last Supper, it looks nothing like a Passover seder. You know, right. where's right. where's the lamb and right. where's, where's yeah. all the other you know accoutrements, right? Yeah. So, so um, this is this is the normal thing. The, the day before Passover uh, is when the Jews go through. They clean out all the leaven, which of course symbolizes sin, mm-hmm. and um, and that's what the Bible actually says. So, so it, it the the word it uses or the term it uses is the day of preparation. Yeah. Okay. Not 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 the actual you know Passover itself, mm-hmm. right? right. Uh, so so um, they have the the you know preparation meal. And then the next day, you know, Thursday, uh, Nissan 14. Um, a- again, if I can read John 19, 14. Actually, here, John, you read this. John? I'm, t- I'm pulling a Speakman. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So we're looking at John 19. Now it was a preparation. Oh, the de- preparation day of Passover? Yeah, this is, this is John 19, 14 through 16. Okay. 
and about the I'm far away from the mic and about the sixth hour oh here which is well sixth hour of course is 12 noon right, right. okay yeah. so about the sixth hour and he said to the jews behold your king but they cried out away with him away with him crucify him Pilate said to them shall i crucify your king the chief priests answered we have no king but caesar then he delivered him to them to be crucified then they took jesus and led him away so, th- so this is noon, right, the sixth hour. But but again, uh, verse 14, now it was the preparation day of the Passover, not Passover. Mm-hmm. He wasn't sacrificed on Passover, and there, there, there's an important point to this, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, John nineteen thirty one. therefore, because it was the preparation day, again, not Passover, that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, mm-hmm. for that Sabbath was a high day. So yeah. this is not the regular weekly go. Saturday Sabbath. It's it's what's called a high Sabbath, mm-hmm. which includes Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot, the three yep. Shalosh Regalim, right? The, right. the major, uh, you know, Jewish feasts, mm-hmm. days right. or, or weeks that God, you know, has ordained, right? Yep. So yeah. uh, um, Matthew twenty eight one. This this is where it gets really interesting, mm-hmm. or more interesting, I should say, uh, when it when it's talking about the actual Resurrection Sunday. It says in Matthew 28, 1, now after the Sabbath, mm-hmm. as the first day of the week began to dawn, that's Sunday, Mary Magdalene, the other Mary came to see the tomb. Now, look at the original Greek again. I love doing that because it makes you sound really smart. <laughs> you know, it makes you sound yeah, smart. You so, so most translations run to that now after the Sabbath. So we think of, you know, the Saturday Sabbath. The, in, the, in the Greek, the word Sabbath singular is savata, but here that's not the word that's used. It's savaton which is plural, so it's actually saying after the Sabbaths, plural, Mm -hmm. there were two Sabbaths that week. There was the regular weekly Saturday Sabbath, but Mm -hmm. the day before that was the high Sabbath of Passover. So for sure, Jesus was crucified. You know, it was it was on a Thursday, but Good Friday. I, I love the concept. You know, let's celebrate. He's he was in Sheol preaching to the spirits down there who, yes. who were in torment. I mean, he was he was doing some pretty cool stuff <laughs> right yeah, on on, yeah, on Friday. Exactly. But the but the main point here is this: when Jesus died on the cross, it was three o'clock p.m. Thursday afternoon. Mm-hmm. Just three hours later, at sunset, is when Passover would begin. Right. This was the exact moment when the Passover lambs. We're all up on the Temple Mount being being slaughtered, yep. being sacrificed. Exactly. And and that's the that's the I don't even want to use the word symbolism. That's the archetype that we want to look at. Yeah. That 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 again, like, you know, Paul says Jesus is our perfect Passover lamb. Mm-hmm. You know, John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, behold the Lamb of mm-hmm. God, right? Yeah. Uh and then and then there's all kinds of parallels with like the Passover Seder, but I see that we're yeah. twenty minutes already. Yeah. Yeah. But um but yeah, the, the, it it it's just so rich how much Jesus fulfills that 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 you know major Jewish holiday, which kind of gets the mind ticking in regard to the other Jewish holidays. Well, yep. if that if that's fulfilled so precisely and so profoundly mm-hmm. by Jesus dying on the cross, you know, Pesach, Passover. Right. Yep. What about the other two Shalosh Regalim, uh, Shavuot and yes. Sukkot, which mm-hmm. we should talk about some other time, yes. which we have before. Yeah, we have. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, Definitely. today's Passover. We we don't have to get into the other stuff, but. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, great, great stuff. So it is, and and tomorrow I, I'm, I'll say this: um, I'm g- going to the Passover Seder at uh, Stan and Andrea's house. Stan and Andrea stands the president of the of the local synagogue, oh, cool. and finally, for the first time ever, I talk Skylar into going. Oh, nice. So she's going to go with me to the to a Passover Seder cool. tomorrow. Oh, cool. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, that great. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. The main ones tonight at the I think at the Aquatic Center. Chabad's coming to town. Oh, there yeah? I did the guttural thing. Okay. And, yeah, uh, they're coming to town to put on a Passover Seder. Um, so tomorrow Stan's doing oh, his. Wow. But anyways, oh, yeah. Cool. So awesome. So I'll tell you about yeah. it later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. it should All be right. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to remind us that uh, John three sixteen is uh, well not only our U version Bible app verse of the day, but it's why he did what he did. Yes. Mm-hmm. For God exactly. so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What a verse to have for today. Amen. Yes, it is. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 1-800-721-9313. That's 800-721-9313. That's 1-800-721-9313 to get in at favorite song or if you have a prayer request. Well, I've got Pastor Ryan and John and Terry in the studio with yeah. me this morning, and we've been talking about what the cross means to us, and uh, talking about Passover and mm-hmm. and uh, Holy Week, a lot of good and stuff there, Palm yeah. Sunday, and 
Yeah, yeah. I so. like I like getting into how he fulfilled all the different prophecies and how there's still prophecies out there to come. Yes. But I don't think we're going to get into that today. I, I think we're going to no. we're kind of kind of bounce backwards a little bit. Um, we're going to jump back to what we've covered already, but there's a reason for it, and I'm sure Ryan's going to fill us in on what the reason is. But we're going to have Terry right now jump into uh, Revelation. We're looking at Revelation one, and we're looking at verses thirteen through sixteen. Terry. Okay, it's like John started to say, we went over these verses already, but just as a review, I'm going to read these three verses again, just to kind of get us back on the same page. Mm -hmm. uh, Revelation 1, 13 through 16, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band, his head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice is as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in all its strength. Okay, yeah. excellent, yeah. I, w I walked into the studio and heard John talk. I thought you guys were just talking. You were on the air. <laughs> yeah. That was so good, man. I loved it. Yeah, John's like taking over. I love it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and, and thank you, Terry. That's excellent. So, so uh, again, you know, we've read these three verses. We actually spent several shows really, like, you know, mm -hmm. hashing these out, right? Yeah. Yeah. But um, but but uh, let's look at something really interesting here, just like the, the overall context of these three verses and, and some insight that we can gain uh, from the details given here. So, so who are these three verses describing? Of course, Bill. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, very, very good. <laughs> right. So, um, so what what I want to do is, I yeah, very, very, you know, clearly talking about Jesus, and and it goes yeah. into these really interesting details about him, right? But what I want to do is, I want to go back to the book of Daniel. There's a reason for this, um, and and I want to look at at some of the some of the prophecies very, very briefly that the prophet Daniel was given. Uh, you know, this is Old Testament times. This is you know, about 600 years before Jesus even, you know, started his ministry, right? Six centuries, I mean, that's a long time. Yes. So, um, so, so we see a lot of stuff happening in the book of Daniel. You know, King Nebuchadnezzar has his dream in, in Daniel chapter, you know, 2, and then Daniel chapter 7, we get, you know, Daniel's dream about the, the you know, world system and all that. Um, we're going to go forward a little bit. Daniel chapter 8, uh, Daniel gets another vision, and, and here's what we read, Daniel chapter 8, verses 15 through 17. Then it happened when I, Daniel, had seen the vision and was seeking the meaning, that suddenly there stood before me, one having the appearance of a man, now this is interesting, and I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Ulai who called and said, Gabriel, make this man, meaning Daniel, understand the vision. So, so Daniel's about to be given another vision, yet another vision, and who is it who's going to be conveying this vision to him? Gabriel. Gabriel says right there, we, we get yeah. his name, so... We know that Gabriel's one of uh, the archangels. Mm -hmm. The Bible mentions four. The Book of Enoch mentions seven. There's there's not a lot of them. Let's put it that way. These yeah. are the very very top angels. Michael is the other main one that we know about, right? Mm -hmm. Gabriel is principally God's God's messenger. That's his purpose. Okay. So um, uh, Daniel chapter eight, uh, just incidentally, that that's a vision that Daniel's given. Again, about the world system, third time, you know, we see this in the book of Daniel, mm -hmm. but the special detail given in Daniel chapter 8, that vision, is is about Antiochus Epiphanes, mm -hmm. who we've talked about on the show before, but yes. um, in the year 165 BC, he committed the ultimate archetype of the abomination of desolation. He canceled worship in the Holy Temple and put, erected a statue basically of himself it, you know it was supposed yeah. to be zeus but it looked like him mm -hmm. um that's really what the vision is about that's not our point here though uh <laughs> next chapter daniel chapter nine i know speak men <laughs> you, you should have never said that there you are. <laughs> yeah confession so um so 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 later on oh i you know i want to mention too just like you need to hear this yeah but but we know from Daniel chapter 8, it says it happened in the third year of the reign of King uh, Belshazzar. Mm -hmm. That was in the year 537 B.C., okay? Right. So, so fast forward again to another vision in Daniel chapter 9. This is, this is my favorite vision by far in the, in the Bible. We call it the 70 weeks prophecy, right? right. We talked about that you know, all the time, right? Mm -hmm. But we're not quite sure what year that, that vision took place. The Bible says, the book of Daniel says that it happened in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing mm -hmm. that. But scholars aren't really sure who that is, so we can't really put a date on that. But that the point about that is Daniel chapter 9, verses 20 through 23. Mm -hmm. I won't read them all. 
But it says, now while I, Daniel, was speaking, praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. So here again, he's about to be given another vision and we're given the name of the person who delivers it, which is Gabriel. Again, the archangel Gabriel, right? Yep. So, so Daniel chapter 9, again, that's the 70 weeks prophecy. That's where we mm-hmm. get the whole concept of a seven-year Great Tribulation and that seven-year right. peace treaty. And again, it, this is stuff that we, we have talked about at length on the show, and, and we'll continue yeah. to, because right. that's, right. Exactly. that's the crux of the whole end-time story. Mm-hmm. Now, here's where, it gets, here's where it starts to get like really kind of mm-hmm. like crazy, interesting. Okay. So, we fast-forward again, and this time we are in uh, Revelation, I'm sorry, Daniel mm-hmm. chapter 10. Which Daniel tells us, the book of Daniel tells us, took place in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia. This was the year 559 BC, mm-hmm. which was 22 years after the vision that Daniel got in uh, Daniel chapter 8. Right. And uh, who knows how many years, maybe 10 years after the one in you know Daniel chapter 9. Now, um, the two previous visions, we were given the name of the person who delivered the visions, mm-hmm. Gabriel, Gabriel, right? Yeah. Daniel chapter 10 we can imagine it's 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 getting more and more cli- you know climactic as 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 we get further in the book of Daniel the story gets you know much more consequential you know all the end time stuff mm-hmm. but in Daniel chapter 10 we 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 get a description of the person who gives is going to give the rest of the vision the prophecy to Daniel Daniel 10 11 and 12 three chapters uh i i'm thinking that we probably need to take a break here and when we come back we're going to talk about the identity of the person mm-hmm. who delivers this final amazing mm-hmm. prophecy to Daniel. Yeah. Okay. Good. And if you, you know, in Radio Land, he did air quotes, just, just uh, so you know. So. Oh, man, I, I need more coffee this morning. Yeah. Off my game here. <laughs> I do that. I do that every show. Oh, yes. well. <laughs> 1-800-721-9313 is the number. 800-721-9313 on your celebration radio network. 33 miles with arms that hold the universe on your celebration radio network and they stretched out and were nailed to a cross those arms and uh they uh uh, we were talking about that earlier this morning and wow i just i love that song his arms that you know they hold the universe but they're yeah they're personal enough where they can hold me yeah Yeah, wow that's good yeah so amen that's our god amen (laughs) So we are in Daniel ten four six. We were reading earlier, and uh, you, or we're going to read, I should say. Um, we were talking about reading it, and I've, I've got that for us now. <laughs> so, um, were we just going to go right into that? Or? Well, yeah. So, so again, you know, we've we've looked at you know um, the prophecies that, that that come before this ones that, that that is about to get introduced in Daniel chapter ten, uh, Daniel chapter eight. That prophecy. The person who delivers it is identified. It's Archangel mm-hmm. Gabriel. Yeah. Chapter nine, se- several years later, maybe ten years later, same thing. It, it uh, Daniel actually names the Archangel Gabriel as the one who gives him the vision. Yeah. But we see something interesting Way here. There's yeah, <laughs> kind of yeah. Go ahead and read it, and we'll yeah. point it out to the listeners. So All this right. is interesting. We're in uh, Daniel ten four through six. It says now the on the twenty fourth day of the first month. As I was by the side of the great river that is the Tigris, I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of Euphaz. His body was like beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning, and his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. Excellent. Hmm. And by the way, you pronounce all those words perfectly. Did I? Cool. I don't know. <laughs> they say yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it sounded good to me. That was good. Wow, so, that's yeah. that reminds me of a verse that we read a little yeah. while ago, doesn't it? <laughs> oh man, that's amazing. Yeah. So, so in our in our was it our last segment that that yeah. Terry read yeah. uh, from Revelation, the three right. verses that we we just right. finished going One, into thirteen right. through sixteen. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so the first thing I'm, I want to point out is in Daniel chapter ten, um, we're we're not given a name. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. So, so you know why why is Gabriel identified by name in Daniel chapter eight? Identified by name again in chapter 9 and then 
here we are in 10, and instead yeah. of a name, we get this detailed description of a, mm-hmm. of a person. It's not Gabriel. Right. Okay? right. Yeah, so um, so what I want to do, and this, this is tricky on the air. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys are teasing me about the air quotes that <laughs> you haven't seen happen yet. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, th- this is, you know, easier to convey, like, mm-hmm. with slides that kind of show the... But, yeah. but John, give yeah. it a shot, man. So All right. So I don't know if uh, you guys out there in the listening world can actually do this or not. But if you can pull Daniel 10, 4 through 6 up and Revelation 1, 13 through 16, and side-by-side side comparison, you can actually see the correlation between the two. Um, do it in the same version. That helps. And usually, usually <laughs> yeah, the King James or New King James version works best when you're looking at this. So if you look at Daniel, he says, um, you know, I looked up and saw a certain man. And in Revelation, it says, one like the Son of Man. So there's your first correlation. He saw a man or one like the Son of Man, Mm -hmm. the two two together. Then he goes into, he's clothed in linen. In Revelation, he says, clothed with garments down to his feet. Similar. Yes, very similar, kind of like the uh, clothes of a high priest where the garments were right. And look look how it's in the same order, even the the details. Yeah. 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 Um, so Daniel, he says, waist was girded with gold of Uphaz, or Uphaz, however you say that. However. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then Revelation, it says, girded about the chest with a golden band. And thank you, John, John yeah. the Apostle, for making it easier without the yes. Uphaz. Yeah. Yes. He just says a golden <laughs> thank band. You, John. But yeah, same, same yeah, description. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, then he goes into, it, and, and this kind of gets out a sequence here a little bit. But Daniel, Slightly. Yeah. He says his face, uh, like the appearance of lightning. In Revelation, it's in verse 16. He says, Continence was like the sun shining in its strength. Yeah. So there are two, two exact same types of descriptions. Exactly. Right? And then his eyes were like the torches of fire from in Daniel. Daniel. Um, Revelation, his eyes like a flame of fire. <laughs> so interesting. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, then again, he says, feet like burnished bronze in Daniel. And in Revelation, he says, feet were like fine brass. Brass, bronze, same to me. <laughs> yeah, shiny yeah, metal. Yeah, shiny yeah, metal. Shiny like metal. Right? Right? Shiny Look metal. a pretty shiny object. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right. um, Daniel says, sound of his words like the voice of the multitude. And Revelation is voice as the sound of many, many waters. waters. Look, yeah. look at that. Isn't that yeah. interesting? That's so fascinating to me. So <laughs> Exactly so, the same. So we have uh, three verses in Daniel, and we're comparing those to four verses in Revelation. And they're, and they're you know, fairly short verses. But in just those two little passages from Daniel and Revelation... We see exactly seven, I should say at least seven, maybe there's yeah. one or two that we haven't even caught yet, mm-hmm. seven there's a bunch. details <laughs> yeah. that, that overlap almost in precisely the same order. There's like one yeah. instance where they're slightly out of order. Mm-hmm. But um, so it just starts yeah. to make you wonder, is right. it possible that the person who showed up way back in the book of Daniel, 600 years before Jesus, you know, even almost 600 years before Jesus even was born, you mm-hmm. know, on the earth, right. That 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 it's the same person who's delivering the prophecy to yeah. the Apostle John, the Book of Revelation, which we know is who Jesus, yeah, because yeah. he's he's yeah. more plainly identified there, you right. know, throughout throughout chapter one and you know beyond. So so is that even? I mean, how's that possible, you guys? Mm-hmm. See what I'm suggesting here? Yeah. That that as important as the prophecy was in Daniel chapter eight, uh, as as even more important, I would say, is the prophecy in Daniel chapter nine. Those are just delivered. Here I'm doing air quotes again right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> by this lowly by archangel yeah, Gabriel yeah. himself. Right, it's a big yeah. deal. But but that the prophecy in Daniel chapters ten, eleven, and twelve it really it gets in the prophecy part in Daniel eleven is so important that Jesus himself shows up to deliver the prophecy. And and again, people might think, well, well, that doesn't make sense. He wasn't even born yet. Well, we know he's existed since mm-hmm. you know before the beginning of of, of our time. universe. Right, yeah. right. You know, read John chapter one. It goes into detail yeah. about that. Right. Yeah. But, um, but uh, oh, oh, here's what I want to say. It's not even un- it's not unprecedented. Not even the Book of Daniel itself. That this concept of what we would call a pre-incarnate Christ. Mm-hmm. So pre-incarnate just means before actually incarnating. You know, becoming coming in. You know, physical form coming in the flesh. Right? Mm-hmm. Can, can can you guys think of what I'm referring to? There, there's a because I didn't put it in the notes because I just did like. Or maybe I did send you updated notes. I don't know. I send you guys some yeah, of my you notes. Did. <laughs> you know, Terry's sending us notes now, which you know yeah. is pretty cool. I love her notes. But um, but but think about it in the Book of Daniel. Is there, is there anywhere else before this event? It's way earlier in Daniel's life that we get this uh, this this concept of a pre-incarnate Christ, the fiery furnace. Yes. Oh, right. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Daniel wow. cha- Daniel yeah. chapter two, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar has his. Very famous dream. We've made it famous right. here on the show, right? About the yeah. statue, mm-hmm. and he's freaked out, and Daniel interprets it. It's, it's you know, the head of gold is Babylon, and then, yeah, the Medo-Persian Empire, then Greece, the legs of iron are Rome, 
the feet of iron and clay. That's the Roman Empire today, which is the United States. Anyways, but but then in the very next chapter, Daniel chapter 3, so what was it, a few months later, a couple years yeah. later? Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar gets this great idea. He had this freaky yeah. dream about the statue, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and he builds a let's statue. Build let's it. build a statue. Yeah, so okay. this gigantic statue, ninety made feet gold. high, or whatever <laughs> right. it was, yeah. makes everybody bow down and worship it. But uh, Daniel's three friends, who by now are part of, of Nebuchadnezzar's government, by the way, that happened yes. at the end of t- chapter two. Right. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their Hebrew names are Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael. Cool. If you want to call them by those names. Good, good one. And um, <laughs> but but he he's Nebuchadnezzar so mad at these guys, so he. Throws them in this furnace that's so hot that the guys that throw them throw in them actually in get die. burned up yeah. and die. That's how hot yeah. it is. But these guys are unharmed. We know the story. You know, we learned this in, in Bible yeah. school when we're five years old, right? right. But, yeah. um, you know, they, and when they finally were released, even their, their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. Right. Not only had they not burned off, right? So just an absolute miracle. But here, here's what's so interesting. So, so Nebuchadnezzar's looking, and this definitely gets the guy's attention. He, he's he's looking in the furnace and he says, this is uh, Daniel chapter 3, verse 25. Look, he answered this Nebuchadnezzar, I see four men loose. So they're, they're ropes that were tied to him. Those burn off, but nothing else does. Walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Yeah, That's amazing. Who is that? Hmm. <laughs> it's, it's 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 Jesus. It's Jesus so, yeah. so Jesus shows up way back in Daniel chapter three, and then this is what we're suggesting here is that guess what? He shows up again in Daniel chapter ten. He's not in the fiery furnace now. Now he shows up in person to meet with mm-hmm. Daniel in order to deliver this prophecy in Daniel chapter eleven and twelve. We should take a quick break, and then if we yeah. could, when we come back, we'll briefly talk about. Why you know why that's really interesting that Jesus would show up to deliver that part of the prophecy? Okay, all right, sounds great. One eight hundred seven two one nine three one three. That's eight hundred seven two one ninety three thirteen on your Celebration Radio Network. Uh, that phone number eight hundred seven two one nine three one three one eight hundred seven two one nine three one three. Coming up in a few minutes, you'll have a chance to win uh, some DVDs and books from Pastor Ryan Speakman. Um, as well as a new CD by Kane. We'll talk about that coming up here in uh, just a little bit. But uh, we've got a lot of scripture to get to, so let's get right into it. Where do you want to start? Well, so so we left off with this um, crazy idea that that Daniel chapter 10 is actually describing uh, the same thing that uh, Revelation chapter 1 is describing, which is Jesus himself. And it's it's crazy because it was, again, almost 600 years before Jesus was even born Mm -hmm. that that this incident took place. But um, but what's the point of it? It's and it, it's so clear. I mean, come on, the 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 details are are. It just makes it so obvious. It's Daniel's describing Jesus, same as John is in Revelation. And um, why would G, you know the archangel Gabriel, God's messenger, angel, you know the highest order of angel, archangel? Uh, he's good enough to show up for the prophecy in Daniel eight, Daniel nine. Um, why does does it take Jesus himself now of all people showing up in Daniel yeah. chapter ten to deliver? Well, to understand that a little bit at least, uh, we look at what the prophecy is that follows. So, so there's 12 chapters in the book of Daniel. We're talking right. about Daniel chapter 10. The prophecy part that Jesus comes to deliver to Daniel uh, is Daniel's uh, Daniel chapters 11 and 12. So uh, chapter 11, very, very briefly, it goes into immense detail about the Antichrist, uh, who he is, where he comes from, what he does, his campaign coming down out of Syria, Lebanon. Uh, attacking Israel, it goes into detail about what we call the abomination of desolation. Mm-hmm. That's where he, he, the Antichrist will take over the, the temple. Uh, and then chapter 12 goes into um, a great detail about what the what the end of the story is, the happy ending, let's say. Yeah. That's where, you know, Michael stands up. That's the that's the other main archangel that, that's actually named by name in the Bible. Uh, he, he's the defender of God's people. And, and D, uh, Daniel chapter 12 des, uh, describes... Really, the second coming, the resurrection, the rapture, you know, the end of the story, and the destruction of the Antichrist. What's what's the point? Well, we've talked about this before. The book of Revelation is God's final parting written word to mankind, yeah. 22 chapters long. Uh, it's the only book in the whole Bible that we could we could really say is basically authored by Jesus himself, right? right. John's the one who puts it to, to paper or papyrus, whatever it was. And it doesn't end with an amen. <laughs> yeah. How do you mean? There's no amen at the end. At the end like of, there of is in every every other book. Oh, I never thought about that. Yeah. Okay. Do you know how it ends? Or no, well, it's 20, we win. chapter twenty two, <laughs> chapter yeah, chapter twenty two, verse twenty one. I know it's the last verse. I can't yeah. remember what it says. 
but um, some like even so, come Lord Jesus, or so, yeah. yeah. But right. uh, so so I just I just want to encourage our listeners. So we we spend a lot of time on this show. Um, you know that what is the purpose of the show? Talking about the end times. You know, I've heard criticism over the years. I'm sure you guys have too. You know, why do you talk about the end of the world and the Antichrist? Shouldn't we just focus on the real Christ? If Jesus Himself shows up in the Old Testament and the New Testament to go into tremendous detail about His yeah. His principal opponent in this world, which is the Antichrist, then I'm thinking we should study it. We should, if if it takes Jesus Himself to to tell us about these things, they must be really, really important. So, mm-hmm. Revelation chapter one verse three promises a special blessing. For studying these things, that's why we here. We're here. So with that, let's go into our next Revelation verse. Yay! In fact, we'll do two of them. Revelation chapter one, verses seventeen through eighteen. Woohoo! Miss Terry. <laughs> and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, "Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen." And I have the keys of Hades and of death. It's exciting, yeah. So this is yeah. this is after we get this, you know, detailed description of of who Jesus is, right? Uh, verses thirteen through sixteen, and and now Jesus is is speaking to John directly, and he's saying, uh, "Don't be afraid. I'm the first and last." We've talked about that before. What that means, right? He's eternal. I'm He who lives and was dead, and behold, I'm alive for forevermore. What what are we celebrating this weekend? Yeah, that event he was alive and he, Sunday, and he was yeah. killed he was dead for three yep. three full days his body was dead in in joseph's tomb right and yeah. then but behold i'm alive forevermore he, he's he's physically resurrected he's at the right hand of the father uh right now that's a promise to us that we will be too that that we'll spend eternity in our physical bodies just like jesus um so you know these are all points that we've talked about before so so look at this we're skipping over like almost two whole verses here and going to the very end of verse 18 and Terry, what does that say again? The, the last sentence there, verse, this is Jesus talking. He says, I, and I have the keys of Hades and of death. So let's look at that. Let's spend some time on that. That's what we do on the show, right? <laughs> that's what I do everywhere I go, spend time on things. So so the, so the that's the point we're going to hone on here. I have the keys of Hades and of death. What does that really mean? What is Jesus talking about? Uh, first of all, um, what are keys used for? Kind of a dumb yeah. question, but... But he, but he's yeah. saying, I, you know, I, ha, you know, he doesn't say I've destroyed Hades and death. I'm in control of them. I have the keys to Hades and death. So we think of keys, and and what are they for? They're, they're unlock it, yeah. you know, locks. Unlock yeah. a door or to or, lock a door, yeah. right? It's right. to it's to you know open things to open things to let yeah. people go in. Or this, I think this is more profoundly to let the point which is let them out. Yeah, let them out. That's he right. has he has the keys of Hades and of death. So so whoever is in prison mm-hmm. in those places. Jesus himself, only Jesus, has the key to open mm. those doors to let the captives out. Uh, now, for us, that, that's a done deal. We, you, right. Do you know that the four of us sitting here, and I'm, and I'm presumably everyone listening right now, mm. uh, we will never see uh, Hades and death. We mm. won't see those places. Right, amen. Because, because of what Jesus did on the cross, which is another yeah. thing we could have added this morning. My gosh, we never yeah. have to experience yeah. right. you know, hell. Do you know that, that <clears throat> almost every human being before Jesus went into hell himself to do what he, mm. you know, accomplished into Hades. Hades. Uh, every human being almost, with the exception of a couple guys, you know, maybe a few, right? Enoch, yeah. Elijah, probably Moses. Every human had to experience that. They had to, you know, go down there and be in, you know, in 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 that place under the earth or inside the earth or, mm-hmm. you know, maybe those are metaphors, whatever. Speaking of which, let, let's look at, we talked about this in our first segment. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Matthew chapter Matthew 12. 12. Yeah. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, Verses 38, 39, and 40 says this, Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will Mm. the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Yeah. The heart of the earth. Right. And yeah. it, it's funny because uh, ever since I was a little kid, I've always you know looked at that like, well, it's symbolic. Mm-hmm. And maybe it is. Maybe it's just a metaphor. But it, it's so interesting throughout the Old Testament and New Testament, whatever, we get a description of um, what the Greeks call Hades. Mm-hmm. And in Hebrew, it's called Sheol. Mm-hmm. Whenever we get a description, it's always like the pro- prophet Samuel, that you know, the cities under the earth. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so I don't know. Maybe yeah. – 
maybe literally Hades and Sheol are like, you know, this giant cavern, like literally in the middle of the earth. I don't know. Yeah. As crazy as that sounds, you know, yeah. you know, we want to spiritualize everything, but, but the, the spiritual realm is more physical than this realm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, you know, we try to separate them. They're really not. Right. So who knows? Maybe it's like yeah. literally, you know, inside the earth. Yeah. Creepy thought. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> um, I should have had one actually here. Um, John, yeah. do you want to, do you want to read this? So, Okay. So Jesus is talking about Jonah and it being in the heart of the earth, just like, you know, the belly of the fish. And look how Jonah says it in Jonah chapter 2, verses 1, one and 2. Okay, so uh, Jonah, verses 2, 1 through 2. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly. And he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. And he answered me, out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. Yeah, yeah, isn't that wild? So... Yeah. So Jonah himself, even in the belly of that fish, understood the the metaphor that was happening uh-huh. there, that that was symbolic of, he used the word Sheol. Yeah. And again, Sheol, you could talk to any, any you know, practicing Jew today, mm-hmm. you know, Orthodox rabbi, and they'll explain, yeah, Sheol is the, is the place of the dead. That's the holding facility for the souls right, of, right. of the dead. They, they understand this, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, exactly. Did, did, oh, I had another, um, yeah. or we had another passage we we're going to read. Yeah, right. so... So so let's start to look at this like what like what Sheol is mm-hmm. how, you know how it's constituted so so John you yeah. had another passage yeah, it's kind of have, a long um, one Yeah we have Luke uh, 16 and it's, uh, verses 19 through 26 and this is the uh, parable Jesus gave but I don't know if it's really a parable because it's kind of like I think he's talking about the truth here it's, it's a rich yeah, it's man like it's a, and Lazarus yeah. okay because he actually mentions the man in this one so it had to be something there um, there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously <laughs> every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to the Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, my, my, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this between us and you, and besides all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed Hmm. so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to to us. Yeah. John, I I, I love what you said before Mm -hmm. you read that, which Mm -hmm. is, you know, you you called it a parable at first and then you stopped and said, wait, I I don't think that's really a parable. I'm so glad you made that point because... A lot of times Jesus, you know, would teach in, in metaphors, you know, yeah. stories that kind of symbolize it. But I think you're 100 percent right. We we don't get that impression here at all. No. Jesus is not telling a, this like you know um, you know make believe story here. He's mm-hmm. describing an actual place, right. And an actual scenario, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and and so so what's he describing? A, a, a place where the <laughs> souls of the dead go. Mm-hmm. This is so interesting. Yeah, it is. A place where the says the souls of the dead go and. And um, here, what we see, what Jesus is describing, we're seeing the unrighteous dead, mm-hmm. which, which in this case is is the rich man, is in that part of of Sheol, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, and then we see a different part of Sheol where the righteous dead. So it's called Abraham's bosom. Mm-hmm. It's a place of comfort. It's still not heaven, though. No. Okay. Again, you you and I will we'll, us here will never see right. this place, right? Right. But there's a there's a place. It doesn't mean that there aren't people there right now. Right. Okay. That's that's this is a such a crazy notion. Yes. We're going to talk about this in our next show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> thing. But um, but but what does Jesus uh, describe here? That that there's a great chasm between these two spaces, mm-hmm. but they're they're still in the same place. They're close enough that they could see each other, that they could they they could talk to each other, cry out to each other. You just can't cross over from the bad part to the good part right. or the good part to the bad part. Yeah. And yeah, John, I agree 100%. Mm-hmm. This, this is an actual, literal, physical place yes. that existed then. It still exists today. Mm-hmm. It's a holding place for the dead, yeah. a place that we'll never experience. Um, uh, again, a lot of interesting things that we're going to look at here. Uh, it's going to have to be the next show. I think yeah. we need to go to a break, and then we're yes, going to we do, do our contest. So, yep. so hopefully that's enough of a cliffhanger that our audience comes back in two weeks, <laughs> and we're going to get more into this. And, and yeah. it's, it's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it is. So, yeah. Amen. I need to clarify something. I was wrong earlier. 
you're never you've never been wrong no, ever. I, but well, you're wrong. Yeah, I have. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Revelation does end with Amen. It's right. the Book of Acts that doesn't. Yes. Oh, okay. I yeah. wasn't sure. You know, hey, listen, I'm I'm supposed to be like the guy that has the whole Book of Rev. I didn't. I didn't remember <laughs> well, what the. I remember I was, it's. It's yeah. chapter 22, verse 21. I couldn't remember yeah, how to end it. Does it. End with I, I didn't take it as wrong. I just <laughs> okay. thought you were dyslexic. So I was like, I know what he meant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the new Bill version of the, of the Bible. I get things <laughs> right. backwards all the time. It's just, you know. one 800 is the number to dial on your Celebration Radio Network.